Okay, everyone, to start our tigers, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fold our paper in half like a book. Make sure your paper is going long horizontal, not tall. And we're going to meet the corners to the corners. Make sure this corner meets, make sure the bottom corner meets. And then once they do, go ahead and press your paper down, make a nice little crease, open back up. The reason why we're folding our paper is so that we know where the middle of our paper is because we're going to make something that's symmetrical. That means the same on both sides. We're gonna be doing some measuring with our fingers as well. All right, after we folded our paper, go ahead and grab your pencil or your black marker. I like to use a black marker so that I can create some nice bold outlines. But if you don't have a black marker, you can use a pencil. Place your finger where you think the middle of that line that we just folded on is, the middle of that line. Go ahead and put a little dot where you think the middle of that line is. Now on that dot, we're gonna make a little straight horizontal line. Now look at this line. You can kind of measure with your fingers. This line should be maybe about two fingers length and two fingers length. So before you make your line, you could actually put your fingers down and place a dot. Place your fingers down and place a dot and then connect with a line. Okay, now that we've made that line, we're going to continue down to make the nose of the tiger. So we're going to make a diagonal line going down and then try and meet that diagonal line with another one going down. Got the tiger's nose, we're gonna start the mouth. So let's put a little number one straight line going down. And then we're gonna make a big curve for the mouth. So what I want you to do is measure with your fingers. Place three fingers down. Your first finger is at the, the line that you just made going down the little straight vertical line. And then I want you to put a dot at the end of your three fingers. Connect that dot in this line with a big curve. That's part of the tiger's mouth. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side so that we know it's symmetrical. That means the same on both sides. Place your three fingers right on that line and then put a dot at the end of the three. And then go ahead and make a curve all the way to the center. Look at that, it's exactly the same. We measured with our fingers to make our drawing a little bit more symmetrical. That means the same on both sides. All right, friends, we've got the mouth and the nose. Let's see what's next. We're going to add the teeth of the tiger. Okay, we're gonna add two big teeth fangs right here and here. So let's go ahead and start with a little curved line. It's almost straight, but it's a tiny bit curved. And then we're gonna curve back up. Same thing on this side. Let's add a few more teeth on the inside too. I'm gonna do one, two, one, two to make sure this is really symmetrical and then one in the middle. Look at that, nice and symmetrical, same on both sides. Okay, let's start the chin. I want you to find the middle of your paper, again, that fold, put a little dot about two or three fingers down And then we're going to draw a line that goes over and a line that goes over this way. So let's do about two fingers this time from our dot. We're gonna place another dot, two fingers. And we're going to make a straight line that connects. And then a triangle that goes up because we're making the bottom teeth now. Let's repeat that on this side, two fingers, make a dot straight line, triangle that goes up. All right, let's finish the bottom of the mouth here. We've got a straight line diagonal, straight line diagonal. Look at how they're ending at the same point. And then go ahead and connect them with a straight line. this is looking great. You can kind of tell that they're all the same on both sides. If you placed your hand on one side, it's the same as the other side. It's just flipped. 
let's go up here now. We're gonna start the eyes. So I want you to look at where the nose ends. Place your finger at the corner of the nose and then go up, 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 up. Let's do about three fingers up. Up, 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 and then place a dot. Same thing on this side. Place your three fingers right where the nose ends. Go up, 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 place a dot. We're gonna make a big curve for each of the start of the eyes. So go ahead and place three fingers down again, right on the dot that you just made. Make another dot. And then connect those with a big curve. Same thing on this side. Three fingers, make a dot. Connect them with a big curve. Remember how we talked about how eyes are not just circles, they're more like a football or a lemon shape? That's why we made that big curve to start the eye. Down here though, we have to make the circle part of the eye, the iris and the pupil. So let's go ahead and draw two half circles and then two circles on the inside of those half circles. All right, here's something else I like to do. I like to leave a little white space right here to show that there's a, a shiny mark in the eye and then I color in the rest of the eye black, the inner part of the eye, the pupil, the black part. That kind of shows that the eye is a little bit shiny. All right, this is looking good. Let's see what's next. Okay, we're gonna start the top of the head. So I want you to find the middle again. Look at where the eyes end here in the corners, and I want you to place about three fingers, actually maybe four. Let's do about four fingers and then place a dot. And we're gonna make a curve that goes all the way around and it kind of meets the end of the eye there. And let's do the same thing on this side. So it's almost like there's an imaginary diagonal line right here from the end of the eye to the top of the head. And mine wasn't quite perfectly symmetrical, but that's okay. All right, we're gonna start to draw the ears now. Let's look at where this line ends and we're just gonna make a big curve that goes up like this. Another one on this side. All right, we're gonna draw the side of the face where the fur starts. We're gonna draw some nice furry sides to the tiger's face. So what we have to do is we have to draw some zigzag lines, okay? So let's start on this side. We're gonna start where we ended this line right here and we're gonna draw some lines that look zigzag. So let's go out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. We're going to do this all the way until we get to the mouth. There we go. Let's repeat that line on this side, right where we ended this line. We have to go out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, all the way to the mouth. Looks good, friends. Now, the fur on the tiger does not have to be exactly symmetrical because we know that a face is definitely going to be symmetrical, but the fur is not always going to be the same. So it's okay if your lines look a little bit different. All right, let's draw some of the stripes on the tiger's face. We're gonna start right here in the middle, put a little dot. And we're gonna draw a curved line and a curved line, and a curved line, and a curved line. And let's do the same thing up here. So tiger stripes are not always symmetrical either. So if these don't look exactly the same, that's okay. Let's put some down here too, some tiger stripes over here. And let's put some over here. We're 
gonna put a few more over here as well. Let's add some dots here and here for the tiger's whiskers. Tigers have these little dots right here where their hair whiskers come out. Let's put a few here. Let's add one more tiger stripe right here. Nice, that looks pretty good. It's looking very symmetrical. We only have a couple more steps left. Let's see what's next. Well, we finished the face. Let's try to add part of the body now. We're not gonna see the whole body, but we're gonna see part of the body right here. So find the side of the tiger's head and we're just gonna make a line that goes off of our paper like this. Let's add some stripes on his back right here. You can add one, two, or even three if you have space. I think we finished most of the tiger's body. Let's add some things to the background. Now, probably this tiger lives in the jungle, so let's add some leaves in the background. Let's work on this side right here. I'm going to start at the very bottom of my paper and I'm just going to draw a leaf shape. And I'm going to add some of the leaf texture. Let's add some more, let's overlap. Let's put one behind, let's put a leaf behind. And I'm gonna make this look like it's going off the page, like it continues that way into the jungle. And I'm gonna put my stem right here and add some of those stem texture lines. Looking good. Let's see what else can we add to this. This area is kind of blank. Let's add a big leaf right here. Let's start with a big straight line. We'll add those stems. Let's draw a different type of leaf. Let's draw a leaf like this. Make a curve line around each of those stems. I like that. That looks like a little bit more what we call variety, different types of leaves going on in the jungle because we know there's not just one type of leaf in the jungle. There's so many different types of plants in the jungle. If you have space, add one more leaf right here. Let's try and do the same thing we just did, that curvy leaf. I like how we're adding some details to the background. It makes some, the picture look a lot more interesting when we add details to the background. What do you think we could do right here? Could we add some more leaves right here? I'm gonna let you decide what you wanna add here. You could draw flowers, more leaves, part of a tree hanging down, or maybe some animals in the jungle. Whatever you think you wanna draw right there, I'll leave that up to you. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one more leaf right here and it's gonna look like it's kind of behind the tiger a little bit. Yeah, almost like it's covering part of the tiger. And I'm gonna put a little line here to show the tiger's neck. All right, this looks great, boys and girls. All we have left to do is color this now. So let's talk about our colors. Let's bring out our color wheel from our art bag. We learned a little bit about warm and cool colors this year. We are going to use warm colors for one part of the drawing and cool colors for the other part. Place your hand and cover up all of the cool colors so that we just see the yellows, oranges, reds, and red violets. These are all the warm colors. We're gonna use these colors for the tiger. We're going to use cool colors for the background, blues, greens, and purples for the background, the leaves, and the jungle around the tiger. The reason why we're doing that is so that the tiger stands out from that background. Warm and cool colors are opposites. So when you put them on top of each other, they like to pop out and stand out against each other very nicely. Go ahead and grab your oil pack.
once you have your oil pastels, you can start to color your tiger. I am mostly going to make my tiger orange and yellow. So I'm gonna grab my orange and yellow. colors uh, we practiced symmetry and we even used some texture awesome job boys and girls I can't wait to see your tigers thanks for following along with me